So Austin, I nominate you to lead the, lead the meeting. So All morning. those in favor, yes. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. So morning. This, this is a meeting of the design subcommittee of the Jones Library Building Committee. We are meeting pursuant to a permission given by the governor in 2020 um, virtually. And Christine is now on the Zoom, I hope. There you go. Fabulous. Christine, we just were in the process of calling ourselves to order. So I'm now going to defer back to you. Wonderful. Thank you. I'm sorry about that. I'm having a computer, so I had to switch to a different computer, but good. I should be good now. So you you did call to order or? Um, I just said we were meeting, but I didn't ask people to you know, say they were here. So up to you. Do, you. do me a great favor, since you're so good at that, would you just continue through the make sure everyone's here and then I'll sure. start with the minutes. A absolutely. Uh, Sharon, Thanks. Sherry. Here. George. Here. Austin. Here. Christine. Here. Thank you. So now turn this over to our distinguished chair, Christine. <laughs> yeah, one with computer issues. Anyways. <laughs> Um, okay, everyone, we, uh, you've all received and the meeting was kind of a while ago, but March 4th, uh, we have the draft minutes and uh, I'd like to um, hear if someone would like to approve them. So moved. Great. Second and is there a second? Whoop, I'm sorry, who was the second? Second, me. Thank you, Lord. George. Okay, so um, are there any issues or changes, suggestions that anyone sees on these minutes? And I'm um, hearing and seeing none. So uh, let's uh, take a vote and approve these minutes from uh, the design subcommittee for March 4th. And I'll ask for uh, Sharon. Yes. And uh, George? Yes. And I uh, also approve them. And um, I think that's it, right? So we have three of three. Thank you, Angela. So I'm just going to vote to approve them, as they say, irregardless. Yeah. Do, do you <laughs> vote? Now, this is the do you vote on these? I, I, I don't know, but I'd like to vote. So I vote anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, I just wasn't sure if the committee is actually only three people and you're sort of a special committee, person? The committee, or? No, the committee is four people. Okay. Uh, ex officio does not mean non-voting. It just means you're a member by virtue of your office. Okay, by virtue. Great. So we have four of four, so they're approved. Thank you. And we'll move to item three. Uh, we have uh, Collier's Project uh, Leaders. And we have Craig here. And um, I'm going to pass this over to uh, Craig to talk about the, uh, we also got um, this document, questions and categories for public comment. And I just want to say that this is not necessarily driven by this group. This is, uh, to, in my mind, far more about the outreach committee, how they're going to handle it. But this is just so the design committee has looked at them and voiced any concerns. Uh, but like I said, this, this will go to um, the next outreach meeting because they're acting on this fairly soon. Um, and then we have item B, introductions. I'll leave it to you, uh, Craig, to do however you want to do this if you wanna do introductions first and then get into the public comment or however you want to do it. Because I know we have some new, well, I'll call them special guests, but um, they're going to be around for a while. So Craig, are you there? I am here. Thank you, Christine. Uh, so yes, I, I'll take your suggestion and do introductions first. So um, I've taken over as Collier's project leaders, project manager on this project. My name is Craig DiCarlo. Um, so I'll be with you guys from now through the completion of the project. Man, I'm very excited about it. Seems like a very um, cool and uh, impactful project. So 
That's one that I'm looking forward to working on. Uh, also with us today, uh, so Feingold Alexander Architects are back on the job. And uh, so today we have Ellen Ancelone and Josephine Penta with us. Um, is, is everyone already familiar with um, Ellen and Josephine? No, we are not. Okay, well, I'll, I'll turn it over to them to just say a, a word or two to say hello. Good morning. Um, and we have Jim Alexander here as well. So Ellen Ancelone, I started on this project eight years ago and we're still here. Josephine Penta and I have been and Jim has been as well. I'm the now the, the principal on the project and Josephine is the project manager and Jim is heading into retirement, but he's still involved with us um, very much so. Thank you very much. Uh, so, Jim, sorry, I didn't realize That's you were right. Gold Alexander. I would have uh, brought your name up I, as well. I'm the Alexander. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Still, it all makes sense now. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? Yeah, it's funny how that happens. But anyway, gone but not for, not gone but not forgotten, as right. they say. Anyway, yeah, I'm still so uh, in a role since the beginning and, and hope to be able to give some support to the team. That's basically mm -hmm. my role. So fantastic. All right. So then the next item was the or is the um, list of questions and comments. Um, I can pull that up if you'd like. But in general, the idea is, you know, we worked with the town. Uh, library and the design team to develop this list of uh, questions and answers. Um, and the goal is to help frame the discussion with the public about um, where on their pro where in the project their comments and feedback will be most impactful. So it's not um, a formal document. It's rather just kind of a, a discussion framework. Um, there are some things that have been um, committed by the town to MBLC. And so those are the things that we can't change um, because they'll be partially funding the project. And so uh, those commitments are very important to keep, uh, but there are many opportunities for the public to um, give their feedback and um, have an impact on the project. So uh, Christine, would you like me to open up that file to share it or save that for sort of more of the outreach uh, subcommittee? Well, we don't have the outreach subcommittee here today. It's just mm -hmm. us. Um, so if you want to share it, um, and uh, Sharon, if you want to, you know, pipe in at any time, because I know the two of you have worked on this document together. Oh, is this the right one? Yes. All right. Revised yesterday. So it's broken down into, uh, can everyone see my screen? Mm -hmm. okay. uh, so yeah. it's broken down into uh, a couple categories. Um, the first being the things that we do not think can be changed at this point. Um, so to setting the ground rules. And so that's, you know, the, the size of the building uh, and the size of the addition, the height floor to floor, because we're trying to, you know, that'll be something that's determined by, you know, lining up with the current floors. Um, the general scope of demolition and the addition, uh, something that's fixed at this point, the general design and massing of the 1928 building and the budget. So those are kind of the parameters. Those are the things within, we can't change those, but within that there's lots of opportunity. So to kind of help people understand what where those opportunities are, we have the next category, which is some aspects of the project that the public can influence. And so we talk about, you know, the general design and massing of the exterior uh, uh, additions, the sustainability. We already have, I believe the town has some goals already, but there's always opportunity for um, pursuing different, um, either, either rating systems or different concepts. Um, so we'd like to hear from the public about that. Uh, general layout of the interior spaces. So there is still some wiggle room uh, nothing is set in stone yet, but there are some adjacencies that the MBLC requires. And there are some things that will, you know, just by virtue of the size of the building, the size of the addition, the relationship to the existing, there are some things that will just have to be, you know, one way. Um, 
general scope of conservation renovation is something that uh, the town has indicated an interest in hearing from the public what what is most exciting and, and important to them. Um, and then some more loose things like the 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 use of certain spaces and we gave you know like what does that mean so we 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 kind of pitched out an idea you know an example of what that might mean you know uh in accommodating certain activities certain people the look and feel of interior spaces uh specifically if the public has an idea about like how they want a certain aspect of the project so to you know be very you know as specific as they want to be um the amenities that's another one we kind of want to pump the public for information. How do they want to use the space? What, what do they need to make the library um, most useful for them? And then um, some about some ideas about the grounds and exterior um, sort of, you know, the, the, the use of the outdoor spaces uh, because the library does kind of expand out. It's not just within the walls, but it expands out to the whole site and, you know, engaging the community, engaging the sidewalk. Uh, and then, to sort of get the creative juices flowing, we came up with just kind of a list of questions. Um, you know, how, how should the library feel? What do you like to do there? Uh, what are the most important spaces to you as an individual or you as a family or you as a group within the town? Um, what would make you wanna come more to the library? What would kind of keep you away as an individual? Um, what do you hope for the future for the library? You know, do you plan to spend most of your time in quiet spaces or active spaces, libraries? Just, you know, in the past, libraries were, you know, shh, that kind of, but now they, they've become more of a community asset. And so there are spaces inside the library that are more active. Um, what is your favorite thing about the current Jones Library? What is your least favorite opportunities for the design team and, and the uh, project team to kind of respond to those? Um, what have you seen at other libraries that you would, like to see at the Jones Library. And then kind of lastly, but not least, so sort of what would be a fun kind of crazy idea that uh, you'd love to see at the library, not necessarily something that we're definitely going to do, but just kind of opening things up, any other ideas that people have. Um, so that's it. This is, and again, this is kind of a, a working document um, that can be adjusted if there are questions or, or further refined. <clears throat> Christine, you're muted. Thank you. Um, thanks, Craig. Um, is, does anyone have anything, any comments on this? Any concerns? Um, so, my thinking is that this is going to the next outreach meeting and they're going to, I mean, Craig, tell me, are they going to refine this? Is this sort of like a draft? Are they just taking this as a guidance document to run with as they frame out their, I think May 1st is their first activity they're trying to have? Yes. So I, I think that the, the current status is that we're running with this as it is. Um, it has been added to, it has been, it, the idea is to sort, sort of circulate this around town and then especially at that May 1st kind of feature these things to, to help the public understand um, where things are. And I believe that this is the version that uh, we're going with. I guess just, to, hi, it's, that's Jim. I just had a couple comments. One was, uh, on the general, the second the aspects of the project they can influence. I think, yeah, the general design and massing of the exterior, I guess the question is gonna, and, and also about adjacencies, the question is gonna be who's going to, how is the outreach committee going to give direction to all of us about all this stuff? Are they gonna, vet this out because some adjacencies, you know, are, are I mean, we have a, lo a lot of things coming from the library staff, for example, about adjacencies and what they want. And now we're gonna have, of course, a list from the public. Is it up to us to decide how that's gonna work and then say, here it is, guys, somebody's gonna have to pull the slammer down, right? And we gotta build a building. All right, so um, I believe the way we discussed it at a recent, um, library building committee meeting was that the outreach committee is going to collect all the information 
right. roughly categorize it and then turn it over to this design subcommittee. To the design committee to make the final decision. Oh, good. Okay, great. Yep. And uh, that's a great question, Jim. Hopefully we'll have a little more insight on this. They're just really trying to plan and figure out what they're going to do. Um, right, yep. Austin, I recognize your hand is up. Thank, thank you, Christine. Uh, again, thanks, Craig and Sharon, for the work on this document. First of all, I just want to be clear, is this document, this is a done deal, or is this document still open to change? I, b I believe it has gone out to at least one, oh, I'm sorry, Sharon. I no, no, that's- At least one user group, or one um, interested party within, within the town. Yeah, so I, I feel like this is a, I, I like how Craig called it a, a, a working document. I, th I think of it as a living document. It has been sent out kind of as a, as a starter uh, for people who are coming on the first. And it can, um, what am I trying to say? It's, it's meant to help people who are, this event on the first is really, geared towards people who have not contributed comments yet or who have not really been paying attention up until now and and so it's hard to start from a place of you know go from zero to 60 in three seconds so here is a starting document saying this is what you definitely can't play with um, and, and here are some ideas of things that can be influenced. But that being said, I'm totally with FAA. I completely understand uh, where what we have been through these past eight plus years. And, and like when you're talking about the adjacencies, Jim, um, I, you know, the staff are, are really looking for functionality. So we want to hear from the public and this will give us an opportunity to respond. If, if some people say, well, we really think that this room should be right next to this room. It'll give us a chance to say, well, this is why it can't, or this is why it, it can. But uh, in answer to Austin's question, I, I feel like it, it absolutely can be changed, modified, clarified. Absolutely. Well, may I just ask a couple of questions about it, Christine? Yes, go ahead. So um, if I'd like to have a cafe in the library or to have no big meeting room in the library, is that uh, a thing that's still open for conversation or is that not open for conversation? Uh, so just m m my response is, uh, I think in all cases, regardless of what it is, it, it will depend on what they're asking for. Uh, you know, the cafe space has already been um, set aside. It's in here. It's in the program. It's what the MBLC recommended and approved. Um, I think that ultimately, if the trustees want to consider selling food and drink in the library, then that's up to the trustees uh, to decide. The reason I ask the question, I, I don't have a stake in food and drink in the library. Right. I, I just am wondering whether or not what I'm going to call the program the MBLC program should be added to the things that are not changeable. Uh, because right now yes. it doesn't look like that is not changeable. It looks like it's changeable. I, I think we shouldn't have a big meeting room or I think we shouldn't have a team space or I think we shouldn't have a this or that. So that's what I was just trying to get at. Those examples are just that exam are just examples. So should there be something about the uh, MBLC approved program is is an element that cannot be changed. Yes, I would agree with you, Austin. It cannot be changed. <clears throat> we we tried to cover that in that little first paragraph, a uh, first sentence. But I think you're right. Maybe a few specific, a uh, specific, More specific. About the program yes, to be in there. But I can certainly add that to the document. And uh, just a couple other things. Thank you. Um, uh, I just would like an example of what general design and massing, uh, what, what is that? So I would like to, I don't think it should have a modern look. I think it should be a colonial look. Uh, I think it should be, should be built out of uh, straw. 
uh, is that what we mean by general design and massing of the uh, exterior of the additions? Th that's my, my that's my interpretation. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. The uh, word massing is a little tricky. I think you're right because somebody's going to say, "Oh, we only want a two-story addition." Correct. But, you know, but then it goes back to the MBLC and the program and the size and the square footage. So it's tricky. Uh, I know, but but people are going to say things like that, and that then we have. That's to... fine. It's fine. I just want to sort of yeah. say out loud. I yeah. don't understand the general scope of conservation. I don't. Do uh, you mean environmental conservation? Do you mean historic? I mean, what does it mean? It, it was meant for historic. I think uh, the the uh, Craig had included that phrase um, in in the in one of the original drafts, and I took it to mean the historic conservation yeah. preservation. So I think there are the, there are still levels that still need to be decided. So the public just, can can. Yeah, I just have no idea what this means. What it means, the general scope of conservation and renovation. So if I input the word, insert the word historic, is that more clear? Well, again, I'm not sure what you're getting at. The balance of historic preservation and renov is that what you mean? But again, we're, we're, we're in a place where we've got, uh, you know, restrictions. We're going to go to the Massachusetts Historic Commission. Uh, it, it, the language didn't communicate to me, and I don't know what it is that you're trying to that you're trying to get at with that particular. Um, I, I think you've hit the nail on the head on the balancing act that we're going to have to play with sustainability, with historic preservation, with all of it, because it's going to come down to money and what we can do what versus what we want to do and how much it's all going to cost. But, but that doesn't mean the public can't talk about it. it, it does that make sense? Well, I, we're again. I'm I'm thrilled that we're open. We're going to hear everything. I mean, it, this is not going to stop anybody from talking. <laughs> yeah. Right. However, once you commit to uh, the public can influence this, then you're you're you know, you're saying to people, uh, these things are open. I didn't. I don't know whether or not the scope of historic preservation is open. Is it no. right? Well, That's I didn't think so. We were pretty committed. Right. So, so what, if, what if we change the word "can" to "may" or possibly, or soften it a little bit? Because I think what I don't want to get too much in the weeds here and sort of start projecting on what the comments and the public will say. Um, I think what Sharon was trying to say and what Craig has tried to develop here is like a starting point. Um, I do agree with you, Austin, that some of this could be misleading and set a tone that people think that they have more impact on areas than they really do. You know, we want to be transparent here. Um, but Craig, I wanted to ask maybe something that would be helpful, because to me, a lot of this is going to be driven, again, by the outreach. And they're going to have their first thing on May 1st and they're going to collect comments. And I think that's when we're going to have a better idea when we receive that you know, not that it's votes, but like, oh, look how many comments were about this aspect or this aspect, or wow, we didn't even think about this kind of comment. Is it possible that we could have a timeline showing, you know, schematic design like that sort of on a phase thing on when the public will have the most um, chance to have that we will have time to contemplate and the designers will be able to incorporate these con you know, concepts and ideas. From, um, so is there a way that we can build some more structure time-wise? Because I don't want to get in the details right now. How about we wait for some of this until after we get what we get from May 1st? Because they're going to have further uh, um, events. I, I think uh, to speak to your first point, uh, I think it's a good one that you know the, the earlier those comments come in, the more likelihood of having a meaningful impact on the project they'll have. Um, and so I'm thinking maybe some kind of really rough, you know, loose timeline, or not loose timeline, but sort of a general timeline, and then maybe a graphic or some words to explain that, you know, now is the right time over the next six to eight weeks is the, the 
best time to get the comments in and, and have them impact the project. And then over the next four months after that, we can still be taking comments, but then at some point, yeah, the, um, the public commentary will, won't have a, a big impact on the project. So yeah, I'm thinking that that would be a valuable addition to this document. And does it kick in again later as an opportunity for the public, like for, I don't know, furniture or paint cut, like, you know, is it all front loaded now or will there be other opportunities to solicit ideas or comments from the public at all? That's a very good point. So the, the exterior of the building and general interior concepts come early on, but then yeah, like the exact paint colors um finishes that's something that will come a, a little further down the road so yeah there could be almost like two bumps like get the information now for big picture whole project concepts and then another opportunity later to solicit more feedback on especially when uh that that item uh so the look and feel uh that's something that can be affected by the lighting the material choices um interior design aspects so I like that idea of kind of showing maybe multiple opportunities for input. And could you create I, something yeah. like that, Craig? Because I think it would be helpful to the outreach committee also. Yes, I could probably do that. And, and I guess- Jim, yes? Yes, if I could. Uh, yeah, because remember, I think what we, we have in the overall schedule, we're supposed to be what, a shovel in the ground in about a year, right? We have a schedule that we submitted to Craig, and he can okay. just adapt that. Yeah, because if that's, I mean, getting this early input, you know, I guess if schematics have a total of eight weeks, we have a lot of things to resolve with both the library requ requests, and then we'll have these to layer on top. We're going to need that feedback very quickly. I mean, we got to move, don't we? And then Yes, and then we'll include MBLC review as well <clears throat> in that. Yeah, there's a lot to do in eight weeks. So if this input is going to be meaningful, we will need to, we'll have to have it within a few weeks, I think, of, of this May 1st date, I would assume. And when are we officially starting? Are we, yeah, I mean, you know, I guess we really, I guess that's the question. How does this affect the schedule? So that's good for Craig to figure out. Great. So Craig, if you can do that and be, you know, because I know you'll be at the outreach um, also. So it will be important to them how quickly they can sort of package up these public comments and get them to us mm -hmm. so that we can figure out um, what else is needed or refined. Um, does anyone know when that, like I know the May 1st, is an event. Is there a date that's been picked out for a follow-up at this point? Not yet. Okay. okay. So that's why this would be um, helpful to have time so that outreach can figure out how they're gonna get as much in as they possibly can in the next six, eight weeks. Um, so just to Bring this back to this document. So am I getting that, Sharon, are you sort of the owner of this living or working document? Yeah, and and it um, the a draft is posted on the town's website. And um, as I update it, it will be updated on the town's website too. And how do you, um, besides what you're hearing in meetings, um, how like does either design or outreach update this or make a change or have something added to it? Well, I, I think, so I'm not on the outreach committee. Um, uh, you know, I was helping with uh, setting up working with staff on the actual May 1st event, which is how I got involved. So I envisioned this document actually going over to the outreach committee and then, you know, for them to use it in their advertising or updating it as need be. So are we counting on Craig as being the messenger for this? Sure. Craig? Yes, I can certainly uh, share this discussion and sort of the, uh, the thoughts that we've had here with the Outreach Committee. Okay. Um, Jim, I see your hand is up. Jim, but his mic is off. Your mic is off. 
we go. I liked your idea though, of maybe we say may influence in terms of that second heading, yeah. just to, you know, keep it a little more, not quite, can influence, can and may, I guess, I don't know, does it make any difference? <laughs> because the trouble with the massing is, you know, if we're not going to reduce the program, the massing, we don't have any more land, it's kind of fixed. Uh, but I guess it's a question again, how much, in, how much, how, who's going to edit this stuff once we get the answers. So that's, I'm, I don't, I won't say any more about yeah. that. <clears throat> I just let it go, Jim. And we'll just, okay. when we get the info, we'll just filter we'll through to, it with the group. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't think of this as being an FAA issue un until until the full building committee makes it your That's issue. It. Right. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Agreed. I think we'll know yeah. more after the May first event when we see sort of what the public is. Oh yeah, Christine. I'm sorry. Um, I think we'll know more after the first May first when we get those comments. So kind sure. of. You know, here we're trying to be all holistic, capture everything. And, but I think as the timeline moves and the events happen and we collect the comments, well, this will get um, more clarified. So it, it, is there anyone in this group on the design um, or are the consultants that want to have anything changed right now while we have this document and Sharon? We're fine with it. Outreach? We're mm -hmm. fine with it, Christine. We're fine with this. We looked at it with Craig a couple of times, so we're we're good. Fantastic, um, Austin. I see your. Hand I just up. have a. I have a, a just a one question about if you could go down to the next page. Uh, I just wanted to make sure I, I understood. So, what activity did you used to do at the Jones Library? <laughs> uh, I I don't understand. You mean I. It references things that I no longer do. Or do you mean what activities do you do at the Jones Library? Or how about what you want to continue doing? Or I, I didn't notice that the first yeah. sentence just it references <laughs> like I've stopped using the Jones. And I didn't think that's what was meant. So that's just a minor editorial suggestion. We can yeah. we'll clear that up, sure. <clears throat> Great. Thank you. Anything else that anyone sees that needs to be tightened up or adjusted? Okay, I don't see any hands. Um, at this point, uh, let's move to item four with FAA. Um, we have A, design status, and then B, mass historic commission process. Um, right. And I believe um, Ellen, yes. you're going to um, yes, and Josephine's going to, so what we thought we would do, we talked to Craig about this the other day, is we'll just give a quick status, we'll, Josephine, we'll run through the plans, just re, get everybody familiar with where we are, um, and then we will touch on uh, Mass Historic, and then, uh, you know, we can talk about some next steps. Great. Josephine, do you screen? have the, share your screen? Oh, one other thing that we have organized very quickly actually with George is having the uh, building laser scanned on Monday. It worked out perfectly being the holiday. Um, and then we're gonna take that scan and bring it into our existing Revit model. So it's, we're really excited that we're, we yeah. got this organized so quickly. Thank you. And thanks, thanks. for your help, George, on that. Yeah, thank you, George. <laughs> That's a fast turnaround for all of us. So it works. Yeah. <laughs> and hopefully they can get it done one day. Um, we've been joking that it's a marathon day at scanning for them. Um, yes. So. Yeah, right. Do you want to start on the first floor, Josephine, and then go down? Uh, sure. It okay. just might, might help folks to. Oops. Went up too far. Perfect. Okay, so I think everyone probably have seen this, these plans quite quite a few times, so I'll just quickly run through them. Um, just to highlight um, everything that you're seeing in light gray are the um, existing walls that are currently there and the new walls are indicated in a solid black. Um, so we have um, our entry 
um, here with our um, original staircase. Um, we sort of kept the main circulation path along the, the north-south axis and is currently running along the entire um, building footprint. We have the main stair and elevator um, along this spine here, and that's spanning three stories. Um, we have uh, the um, youth um, children's area in yellow highlighted here on the west side of the building. And um, we do have an entry point for them, a separate entry um, that we've kept along the west side here. And we have our um, material return area here along with um, staff entry that we've kept along the east side of the building. Um, the young adult is located here in this orange color. Um, and then we have um, our adult section, which is broken into um, two separate levels. Um, we have nonfiction back here as part of the addition. And can you point out the circ desk, Josephine? Oh, sorry, you were just going to do that. Sorry. Yeah. Um, oh, that's okay. We have the um, the circ desk sort of in the central um, area of the entire footprint, which is here and um, very visible um, from the entry point and really from almost every part of the library, which was um, an MBLC request. Um, and we do have a bank of toilets here as well as part of the main public space. Um, I think that highlights most of the um, main features of the first floor. Mm -hmm. um, I guess we'll quickly take you downstairs um, just to go back. Uh, so again, we have in light blue, the main circulation space that's spanning along this, this spine. You will see on a couple of levels, we do have an extra set of steps here because we're trying to meet all of the existing heights of the original library. Um, so we have that on two separate levels. Um, and again, we have a bank of toilets, um, trying to stack them as best as possible along the um, every floor of the library. And we do have this um, rare entry here, which allows the opportunity to um, enter the large meeting room um, in the off hours of the library. So um, this large meeting room houses uh, currently a little bit over 200 seats at the moment. Um, and does have a small kitchenette and coat closet uh, adjacent to it. Um, to the right here in yellow, we have the special collections, um, which we did um, separate out the exhibits um, of the special collection to be next to the Burnett Art Gallery here. Um, and again, with the footprint of the original building in light gray, you can, you can see here um, what is new versus what is existing. Uh, we do have ESL program back here with the tech services um, as part of the addition at the ground level. And then um, back in the original portion, we do have facilities and uh, mechanical uh, spaces that support. And Josephine, we have a service entrance by the tech services. There is, yeah. We sort of kept one of the egress stairs where you currently have a set of stairs, which is right here that's running um, or spanning uh, all floors of the, of um, each floor of the, uh, existing library and new and um, and we kept this uh, service entry here. Josephine, this is an old question, so forgive me for re-asking it. If I'm in a wheelchair and I'm at one end of this library and I want to go to the other end of the library on this ground floor. Yes. How do I do it? So this elevator is a two-sided uh, front and back. Yep. Um, access elevator. So you can use that to get from one section to the other. So I'm in, an, I'm, I'm in a, a wheelchair. I've got to go into that elevator, push a button. It's going to come up. The door is going to open. I go at the other side. Yes. OK. Um, so there is access. Um, there aren't a ton of spaces in this front area to access, but that is um, the idea at the moment. Is that higher or lower, Josephine? I forget. This goes down, down. So right. this portion is higher. So right. the steps down here. And then we do have in the special collections area, we do have this this ramp as well. 
Yeah, I was thinking not just about patrons, but at some point the library may have a staff person. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's, I was just thinking about people from the public, but yeah. okay, thank you. Yeah, we, we did um, look at ramps um, at a couple of these uh, levels um, and it just proved to be a little too long of a ramp to, to, to get that to work. Um, so that was the idea at the moment. And the library is fully accessible in, you know, and, and we are using the elevator to do just that in some locations, Austin, is to make that vertical distance up. So um, if there aren't any question, other questions, we can go up to the top floor. Uh, so again, as we noted earlier, um, the adult collection is split up. So we have nonfiction on two floors in the same location, which is back here in the new part of the new um, north side of the addition. Um, but we have the adult fiction um, broken up in this space here on the west side. Um, again, this is the main stair and elevator that spans that circulation spine. And we do have, again, a couple of steps down to, again, reach the existing elevations of the original building. Um, we have an adult reading room at the front area here. Um, and a currently a small meeting room slash computer lab um, in this space, if you can see my cursor. Mm -hmm. And um, we have the administrative area back here along with another bank of toilets, um, public restrooms, and, um, uh, am I missing anything else? Our main two egress stairs, aside from the main stair, are, again, are um, one located here where the original um, stair is, and then we have one here in the original building. Um, and th this is going to be egress um, to get you from the top floor all the way out. Josephine, may I ask a, a naive plumbing question? So the, 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 the toilets stack up, it looks like they're not like above each other. And if that's, it, it, does that cause any issues in terms of plumbing in the building? We tried hard to stack where we could. Yep. Um, unfortunately, our other stack that is on the first floor and ground level um, really is right here in this location yeah um, so we didn't want to lose all of that yeah. um, light coming in and views out yeah. and wanted to keep this as open as possible um, so we do have a um, existing wall here where yeah. we we can fur out and have a nice chase luckily um, that will supply us area for um, plumbing but we will have to work that through in our coordination with MEP systems as we move forward this bank of toilets actually has shifted a few times. Um, we did have it in this area here at one point. Um, so uh, we did look at a couple of different locations for it. Thank you. And Josephine, did you, did you, oh, did, does anybody have any questions? And I think Josephine was gonna show us a, well, a couple of the renderings that we had. Yes, uh, I can pull those I up. have one question. Oh, sure. um, just on the on the ground floor, um, thinking yep. about the bathrooms when Austin brought them up. Um, I know that meeting room, it, you know, it, there's always been an issue about wanting to have access after hours. And I can see the little mini foyer there and there's mm -hmm. a um, kitchenette and a coat closet. After hours, would a meeting when you set up to 200 people there, do they have access to restrooms? Yeah, so what we did here with this um, south side egress of the, uh, at the meeting room, we have um, an adjacent bank of um, restrooms here. And the idea was that we would probably have a security gate somewhere along okay. this area here. So it would sort of close it off to the public, but they'd have access to the restrooms for um, during that meeting meeting time. <laughs> I see the dotted lines now. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I was wondering how that would work. Thank you. Yep. Does anyone else have any questions on this part? And she'll move to the um, outside. I don't see any hands. Thank you, Josephine. No problem. Josephine, you had one more floor, right? The little. Yeah, the, the top level, just the small space here. Oh. Um, 
it, it's the boardroom and the staff break room. Um, and again, we've got that um, stair that's going down to the egress um, to access this this floor. There's no elevator to that. There is this existing elevator that we um, did keep in this current set of documents. Okay. So handicap or could workers could get up there. Mm -hmm. Correct. So I'll jump to the perspectives. So, um, I, Ellen, I'm not sure if you want to speak to the perspectives. Yeah, sure. So we the and I'm sure you've seen these before. So we've developed these based upon after a number of uh, design uh, meetings, and and we're designing this with some taking with some clues to the existing, trying to use a similar color uh, masonry for the exterior cladding, um, similar roof sh shape. We have uh, contemporary dormers on. Do you have the other, is there one more of the outside, Josephine, that we have? And this is a back view um, showing, you know, the, this is all new back here, what you're seeing. Again, using a similar roof um, massing shape um, to help scale the project down. And um, the materials, we can still, we still so early in design, we can talk about materials and color, but our idea is to, is to blend with the existing. And then this is one of our interior shots showing how open and airy. I believe this is the second floor, Josephine. It is. Third. Yep. Yeah, second. Um, so it's the adult space. It gives you an idea of how much light we're trying to get in there um, with the skylights um, to create this light, lofty uh, space. I might just add too, you can see on the right where we're trying to keep oh, right. aspects of the existing yeah. building you know, within and so they're exposed into the new library edition. Mm -hmm. And I think that's it, isn't it just being for our yep. slide deck? So that's what we have for our slides um, of the design as a status update. If and if does anybody have any questions? And if not, Jim is going to talk just briefly about the Mass Historic uh, Commission process because we've had we've done a fair amount of that and we've already talked to them about this project. But does anybody have any questions on the design? I don't see any hands, Ellen. Great, excellent. So, Jim, just, do you want to give us a brief? Sure. I just had one little question about, are, will these be mounted out for the May 1st exhibit? Uh, how, how will they be in on easels in an area or how will that happen exactly? Do we know or? I, I, think I, th I think what they were looking to do is actually post pictures uh, of ideas of already renovated libraries, like of teen spaces and that kind of thing, kind of to generate people thinking about it. Um, uh, that was the thought. Oh, oh, okay. Nice. Yeah, good. Mass historic, Jim. Oh, yeah, maybe just a, a few comments on that. You know, one of the things we need to do, and I think it's covered, you know, we've got a couple documents that are controlling this. One, of course, is the agreement with Mass Historic, or the uh, easement, which is on the building. So there's one thing. We now also have the Historic Structures Report, uh, which is, is valuable. It gives a lot of history about the building. It also identifies clearly that the addition from 92 is not historically significant. And so it does a number of things that are are helpful, but it and it does not actually. It makes a strong case for keeping as much as possible of the, <clears throat> excuse me, interior woodwork as possible, since some of it is fairly unique, which we are trying to do as much as practical with a lot of the fireplaces, some of the trim and casings on openings and things like that. So, so both those documents, I think, we can work with. 
Um, they all point to, of course, still the need to go to Mass Historic for a complete review since state money is involved. So um, we've done the first step by filing with them already a notice of, of project, the, the project proceeding. I think the thing we need to generate, though, and part of it will come out of May 1st and adjusting certain things, but is to get to the local, the uh, Amherst Historic Commission because having an endorsement and approval from them goes a long way, I think, toward affecting, you know, the, the state. So as soon as we, and you know, they really, the state wants to see, as we've been told several times, a fairly, you know, se serious presentation of the final schematic design. So, you know, if we were sure nothing was gonna change, we would go there right now. Well, we know because of staff comments and other things, we need to make quite a few interior changes and those could affect say the historic building. So we just need to be sure that's under control um, and that we get the local, local team supporting us uh, goes a long way. And I listened to the presentation made by the, the historic structures people to the local commission. I think we can build on that and it seemed to me that uh, the strengthening of the discussion was about a lot of it about the interior um, and the keeping as much as we can. Now, the guidelines do not normally make us do anything with the interior particularly, but I know the locals are going to be interested in that. On um, the exterior, you know, we, we just have to, to make the presentation and make the argument that we're doing a, a reasonably compatible addition to a historic building, given the size. That will be a challenge. I mean, Mass Historic, according to you know, our, ourselves and consultants, is concerned about the overall size of the building. So we just have to really go in and maybe beg forgiveness because that's what it's gonna be and, and push it through. Uh, and we're doing everything we can to mitigate that, I think, at this point. So, so it seems to me the next step is to finalize the schematic, go back to Mass Historic, and make an, uh, an application, make a presentation, and deal with the comments as best we can. Right. And one of the fine line uh, things we have to uh, walk on is the need for the existing building to be... Um, safe in terms of right. having these tiny rooms um, blocked off, MBLC will not agree to that. Right. It, they, they, their focus is on a library is security for the patrons and the staff. And mm -hmm. so what they really push for, and Sharon knows this, is, vi is a sight line to all these different right. spaces. And that was one of the key um, pieces of locating the CERC desk where it is. It's really the visual uh, overseeing of the library. So that's some, something we, we can certainly uh, solve, but it's something that we have to, you know, be really delicate about. I think that's a good point, Ellen. I think one of the things as an example we can point to is the whole idea of keeping the existing stairway in the entryway and keeping the feeling of the entrance mm -hmm. similar yeah. to what's there. We originally did not intend to do that. It does create a bit of a bottleneck and blah, blah, blah. But we've solved that by pushing the circ desk further into the library. So that hallway is really just a passage. It isn't a gathering place. There's nothing blocking it particularly. So, right. so we've already made a great effort to preserve as much interior detail as we could and mm -hmm. still make this a functioning library. And luckily the historic report also talks about that. The fact that we need to have a 21st century functioning library. So, um, and there have to be compromises. So that's what this will be about. Thank you, Jim. So just to go over one part you said, you said finalize the schematic and then go back to Mass Historic. Yeah. When would we go to the Amherst Historic Commission and ask for their backing? Where does that fit in? It should be before we go, I think, to the state. Yeah. Because the state, you know, they're, they're, this will be somewhat controversial for the state people. So we need to have good local support Think to make this a little easier. So as soon as we can get the schematic roughly, and I'm not saying we have to cross every T on the interior, but we do need to make sure, you know, we can accommodate 
the interior changes with the scheme that we have because we are keeping some exterior walls of the existing building in the interior, which does make a few, you know, compromises. We have to put big openings through one of them and, and things like that. So the sooner we can get to the local commission, which also, of course, has the jurisdiction over the easement, right, Sharon, I believe. So, so we need to make sure they're satisfied. So do we have to have um, schematic finalized, finalized by the building before going to them. I'm just thinking like Craig with timeline trying to fit this in. Well, that's why I think it's important that we do this, you know, this group of revisions to the schematic as soon as we can. So, you know, because I think getting, you know, summer's coming and then people are on vacation, do, do commissions meet? So we need to, Craig, fill in that schedule with when does that yeah. commission meet? How do we get on their agenda? It's not too early. If we had to get on their agenda in, in say, June, well, that gives us all a, a firm target. Uh, then we could go on to Mass Historic and, and do that stuff. Anyway, and I think so even before that, before we see the historic groups, we will need to get uh, a review by MBLC just oh, to get yes. their blessing. With which we can changes, do yeah. yeah we we know them well so they're us, they're very flexible on when they can meet with us so we'll just have to put a date craig in, right. in our calendars for that and they so have some other happens, kind of... mblc and then we would go to local yes. store. i think that's okay. the safest route that's probably be the best route. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay and the only town employee we have here right now is angela and um Angela, if you could just put a note to self, that would be something to look into the historic commission when they, if they have set meetings. I know some committees are more set right. meetings than others and others are more on the fly. So um, we can get that information to Craig or who the chair is. Um, any other um, information from our designers? No, I, I just think we, if we can, and maybe the, your larger group decides this is just um, when, as Jim's saying, when do we actually start? We need some feedback uh, from Sharon and her staff. And then we'll, once we get that, we can really get the engines going, right? <clears throat> uh, because when we do have that, because we're so, we've been at this for a while and we've designed this bit building pretty well, but there's things that we're going to adjust. And we know that. So the eight weeks for a schematic is a, is a decent amount of time, but it, it goes quickly. So we really want to hit the ground running and use everybody's time. Well, so that clock has not, is it just starting right now or what's the, I, I, I would say we will wait till we get Sharon's comments and then we'll start. Okay. And that's that seems fair. On eight weeks. Yeah. yeah. Right. They're about, other... we're not going to be by the minute, but they, they're about, because we really can't get hit the ground running till we get that. Just one other quick comment. You know, there is some, obviously, uh, because of the historic stuff, can be some confusion about different things. And I know that it's confusing to everybody, even us. But one aspect is, you know, historic tax credits are a lot different than the approval from Mass Historic to do this addition. The historic tax credits raises it to a whole nother level. So we are, we are not currently discussing that. Now, they, they, they dovetail together with certain approvals, but, but it's a lot of paperwork. It's a whole different structure. And so I don't know where that is, but this we are not talking about that this morning. Correct. And I think if, if we are going to do, if that's part of the plan, that Craig can blend that into our schedule. Yeah, because that's a different schedule. Yeah. Okay, so um, if we're done with that, I just, um, for, oh, Austin, I see your hand, sorry. Thank, thank you, Christine. Thanks very much for, for the walkthrough. So Jim, Ellen, Josephine, uh, based on your experience, what is the uh, time parameters for approval once we get to the state level? Good so question. what is the, you know, this is the quickest we can imagine it. This is the slowest that we can imagine it. And how, if at all, is that time parameter built into the existing schedule? Well, 
just say in general, the problem with the mass historic, of course, is they have 60 days supposedly to respond to everything. But the problem is they, you know, they sort of do what they do and you need their approvals for certain things anyway. So it's a little hard to pin down, but I think we, you know, the sooner we get in, I mean, it, it, and normally it falls within the production schedule, right, for the building. Like we have to do the working drawing. We have all that time. So I would say it probably isn't a driver, but if we had a major problem, we need to find out, you know, as quickly as possible. That's, I guess, the, that's why the schematic thing puts it all out there once and for all. Everybody's put their stake in the ground. Now, this is what's got to be approved, and we all need to work on that. So that's why it's important to do that. Um, it could drop, it could often rolls over into the DD phase, the next phase for the final approval, and that's okay, as long as we're not in any big trouble. The nice thing is we hopefully will be instituting informal reviews at Mass Historic again. That is very helpful. And I, I don't know if we ever got really any comments back, Sharon, from the submission particularly. I don't uh, I No, because um, yeah. they're looking for full-blown yeah, done Yeah, they're looking schematics. for a serious, doc, yeah, serious yeah. proposals. That's, so that's but, really the key. Can I ask you, so going back to the historic tax credit, so that that's a really important piece of this puzzle uh, because we need that funding, we're relying on that funding. And so you said it was separate from uh, mass historic um, approval, well, but are, are they happening concurrently? Well, they're, they are dovetailed in the approval. The process is a, just a little more... It's, it's more complicated in terms of, you know, structure, as you know. So if you're going to go that route, it's good to start out with that in mind. The approval will generally be the same. So they do dovetail. I don't okay. mean to say they're totally. The work we're doing would be the basis for tax credit approval. Th that was my question. Does, yeah. I, yeah. I, yeah. Great. The, thank you. The standards should be the same. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, sorry, I misspoke that. No, it's okay. And may I just say, Christine, just to be clear, lest there be any confusion, uh, historic preservation is a high priority for this project. Mm -hmm. It's not that we're going to have an adversarial relationship with the Amherst Historical Commission or the State Historical Commission. Mm -hmm. We are all on board with the idea that historic preservation will mm -hmm. be a high priority for this project. So um, I just want to make sure everybody, yeah. we yeah. remind ourselves of that, that we're, we're, it's not like we're going to try to do something and Mass Historic is going to say, you people aren't prioritizing historic preservation. They right. may disagree with us uh, on uh, details about what it is that we're going to do and what their impact is on historic preservation, but we're all on the same team when it comes to this goal. Right. Right. Yes. Agreed, Austin. Absolutely, Austin. And um, I think our concerns, a lot that we're expressing today, is just more about timeline and process and having everything flow and not get um, hung up on things. I think uh, the whole relationship with all the historic is just about, you know, compromise because very often it's money and, uh, you know, that controls a lot of those decisions. So, um, and we will know more as we keep moving forward. Um, so moving forward, we have uh, another design meeting scheduled on the 29th at the same time, a Friday at nine. Earlier that week on a Tuesday, we also have a general Jones um, Library Building Committee meeting, um, keeping that in mind. So um, I'm speaking to you, Craig, out there, and also our designers. Um, what do you see should be on the next design committee meeting? Is there anything we should be looking at or preparing for? Um, and is the timing the 29th good? Um, and we also, just a reminder, a few days later, the first outreach thing will be on, on um, May 1st. So I personally, I think the timing's fine. Two weeks. Uh, hopefully, we'll have some more information, some more direction. Uh, find uh, find Gold Alexander. We'll have a little bit of time to start incorporating things. Um, I think it will be another meeting that's similar to this one, kind of uh, general overview in nature. 
Um, Could we have a little bit on timelines or schedules? I think that would help everyone start to. Certainly. It's just a lot of pieces floating around right now. Yep, absolutely. I wonder if it would only, if it help, would it, I don't know, I hate to postpone, but would it be better to push this meeting till after May 1st? Or is that just, I don't know, a few days after when stuff came back? Or is that too soon? Because I'm not sure what we should do between now and- I, I was I think, thinking, yeah, I, I think? Ahead, Alan. I'm hoping that we can get some feedback from Sharon and her team and bring that to the next meeting for discussion. I mean, I'm not sure if how okay. much time, you know, it depends when we, Sharon, I, I can imagine you're working on it because I know we, I'm sure you have been. Um, and we can just talk about those items at the next meeting. I don't, we won't have time to incorporate them as my guess, but I think it's, it would be a good discussion for the group. And we all meet after this call by any chance? Ellen, Jim, Craig, I, I and Josephine and me? No? Okay. I can, not, I can, I have another meeting I was supposed to be at at 10. Okay. So I'm going to have to join that one. Um, but I can later today, I can meet at one. Oh. I'm not available at one, but. When are you, are you available, Josephine? Um. So I hear noon. Or, What's that? I don't. Yeah, I, I'm out for a few hours uh, today at lunchtime. How um, about 11? Got a meeting at 11. Ah, it's not looking like today's going to happen. How about no. how about next week? That is probably easier. I'm on vacation next week, so oh, I wanted right. so to we, do it today. Right, Otherwise, right. y'all are <laughs> waiting. Let's for try me. to do it today. You know what? Let's do it right after this. I'll just, uh, I have a coworker at the 10 o'clock. She can handle that. So let's do this. Okay. Just so Thank we you. can get it. Thank we you. Don't, we don't, we don't need me for that, right? I'm going to, I have a 10 30. I should. Yeah, yeah, I don't think we need you, Jim. Yeah. Sorry, Please. Jim. We no, always sorry, need sorry. you. No, you don't. No, you don't. Ellen, Ellen, Ellen will get after me. <laughs> yeah, if we need Jim's info and anything from him, we know where he is. Yes, exactly. All right. So if this takes care, care of Sharon's um, input, then it would not happen on the next meeting on the 29th. So should we shift the meeting to after the May 1st? Any idea? I don't know how quickly the outreach may be often or should yeah. you have any idea about this how craig how quickly do you think they'll be able to get comments to us from that event that's a don't know really because we don't know how many comments we're going to get right. i mean we could have three people or we could have 300 people mm. we just we just don't know at this um at this point uh but uh Craig and Jared, I mean, we can communicate with the outreach people. So um, if May 1st is a Sunday. If we pushed our meeting a week from instead of the 29th to Friday, May 6th, that would give them five days to collect the comments to give them to us. We're under a tight thing. We're talking about like six, eight weeks here. So I'm wondering like how quickly is five days enough? Does anyone? Sharon, uh, you, you know, so imagine e even if 30 people come, they're going to be leaving comments on sticky notes and post, you know, post-its and flip charts. So all of that has to be typed. Um, so I, I, I appreciate what Christine is saying. Maybe it makes more time and uh, makes more sense to me on the six. Uh, Ellen, what do you think? That's it's that's fine with us. I just I just want us to. Uh, you know, I think you guys want us to get going, right? Um, so, and I think, and Sharon, correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think we're going to have decisions about what you want today, right? You're probably going to ask us some questions and then you'll go back to your staff. And oh, I have decisions for you. <laughs> okay. I'm kidding. Oh, I know. Right? So I'm <laughs> guessing, I'm guessing, Christine, we're, we're not going to have, we're going to, I think the final comments from Sharon, we should review with the group. And I would like to do that on the 20, 29th. Okay, great. So we so can then we, would then have we can actually start. And then you can start. So then we could have another design meeting two weeks later yeah, on yes. the, 
on the 13th and we would yes. definitely have the comments by the outreach by then right that makes more sense to me okay and what craig that's why the point? timeline of the, all of this will be helpful because then we'll see how it, the time starts shrinking on the back side um so all right so at this point we'll stick with the 29th at 9 a.m and then we'll uh, set aside, we're saying our next meeting will be on uh, May 13th on Friday at 9 a.m. And uh, at this point, um, I'm, I don't have anything for item uh, five for things I did not anticipate in 48 hours, um, except my computer not working. But uh, I'll move to item six, public comment. And uh, let's see here. I see one hand up. Uh, Bob Pam, and I think Angela is all right, talking permitted. Are you there, Bob? Yes, I am. Hello, welcome. Thank you. Um, I have, uh, let me say this in two parts. Um, first, in terms of the things that cannot be changed, you have a document. There is something that says design and massing of the 1928 uh, portion. It really should say the design and massing of the addition to the 1928 portion. We're not changing the design and massing of the original. So that's just a, a simple edit, edit to that document. Um, the, the, the other questions that I have relate to the design. Um, I have uh, the design that, that we in town have seen over the last two or three years is has not changed essentially. Um, and so uh, some of us have had thoughts on that. I uh, prepared a, a set of comments a, a year ago. Um, they have been available to the library staff um, and they involve for the most part exterior kinds of issues. Um, the Two biggest questions had to do with the fact that there is a difference in floor level, um, which you're addressing with a, a, a an elevator with, with several stops at the same floor. Um, that will work for most people. It'll be very inconvenient for people who are handicapped and probably very difficult for those who are blind, but that's one issue. The second issue has to do with the driveway on the east, which is one vehicle width um, and no way out. So you have to back in or out each time. It is complicated if there is more than one vehicle coming in and out or trying to. Um, and it is clear that the design is now making the rear entrance very substantial and important. So the, the enormous schematic issue is um, we originally designed the, the rear portion to stick out on the east because of the Kinsey Garden that is disappearing as an issue. Um, so the question is, is there something that we can do which would allow for access that goes through or allows a turnaround or does anything which eliminates that issue? I've got other things, but those are in documents which um, are available and um, can be talked about at another time. Um, thank you, Mr. Pam. This leads me to ask a question to some, um, some higher powers here. We have this outreach thing coming on you know, May 1st, and a lot of people won't be able to attend that either, you know, because they have other things they have to do. How is there another way that the outreach is going to have people be able to submit their question? Like sort of what Mr. Pam was talking about, you know, how would he go about making sure that these comments get put into the mix? I think there's, um, so we do have Angela, one of the town's community participation officers. She can talk about what's available on the town's website. I think there's still um, a space on the library's website where people can insert comments as well. Okay. Um, so there's a place on the library website where anytime right now people can go and, and at some point we will like put a date and collect and 
like what happens to them that have been entered so far? Are there a lot of them or? Uh, so yeah, so we've been collecting and 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 kind of you know mushing together and sharing as part of our thought process with with the architects. Okay, and um, Angela, is there somewhere on the town website? Sure. So I know that there have been conversations with um, Anika Lopes and Alex Lefave with the communications manager for the town, Brianna Sunred. They are working to create a Engage Amherst page dedicated to this project. And so the Engage Amherst page accepts anonymous and people can also sign in and create an account and give feedback. And then there are lots of different outputs for that. There are pie charts, which tell you which topics, was it programming, was it aesthetics, was it exterior, was it interior? And then it also kind of gives us spreadsheets of each individual comment. So it's easy to kind of push out in lots of different reports and present to you. Um, and we can put a deadline on that. We can put a shutdown date on that web page. Okay. But I would encourage people to call us. I'm happy to take phone calls. Um, and then I just type those up and I send them off to Sharon Sherry and she collects them and can share them out with you as well. So however people feel most comfortable, we really wanna hear from everyone. Sharon, oh. I'm sorry, you were muted. I didn't hear what yeah. you said. No, nope. I, I, um, is there a way if people are in the library or can they call the library? Is that the same thing as you just say, I have a comment about the new building construction? Absolutely, they can talk with any staff member here or they can come into the office and chat with me. Um, they can leave us notes, they can be anonymous. Absolutely, email, right. however. Very good to know, okay. All right, well, I think, um, is there anything else that anyone, I don't see any other public hands up. So just coming back to um, the panelists, does anyone have anything they need to say before we close out the meeting? Up, oh, Austin, I see you. It's, it's not a, it's, it's, maybe it's a need, maybe it's just a desire. I, I wanna just say uh, how thrilled I am to be in partnership with FAA and Colliers. Uh, again, the opportunity to see Jim and, Josephine and Ellen and seeing those schematics, uh, we are indeed, the town of Amherst is indeed lucky uh, to have uh, this group as our partners in this project. So it's great to see you all again and look forward to the work that we will do together. Thank you, Austin. We're thrilled to be here for sure. Great, yeah, thank you. Um, you guys have been at this actually for a long, long time. And same thing with Sharon and the board of trustees, the library trustees. Um, it, it's finally moving. So this is exciting. <laughs> and <laughs> thank you for your time today. Um, I'm going to adjourn this meeting and we'll see you on the 29th. Thank you all. Thank Great. you for your time and hard work. Great. Thank you all. Sharon. Angela, yeah, Angela, is it possible for everybody else to leave and then me just chat with the architects? That would be great. All right. Bye. Have a good weekend, <laughs> everyone. Thank you. Bye. Carry Thank on. You. Bye. 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 Thank you. Um, Sharon, I just need to stop the recording. Thank you. <laughs>